we will talk about one particular speech because, you know, I listened to it uh, about an hour after it was given. And all I have to say is, no, I have a lot more to say about this, but, but this is a good start. Wow. In Davos. Well, anyway, for that matter. Wow. I mean, just wow. Uh, you know, I, I, I almost never have anything good to say about politicians. Um, <clears throat> and, and definitely have nothing positive to say about any politicians. Uh, speeches and and uh, and Millet just gave a great speech. Now, granted, granted, it 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 had flaws. It could have been better from a, def a number of different dimensions, a number of different perspectives. There were things I really, really, really w would have liked to have changed. But you have to focus on the positives because the positives are so overwhelmingly good as compared to the negatives that, wow, I, I highly encourage you uh, to watch it. it you know, it, it, I'm sure you've watched a lot of uh, politician speeches that you just thoroughly hated. I'm putting it here in the chat. Uh, you can go watch it. It's uh, it, simultaneous translations. It's, uh, you get the English translation of it. Um, and I, I just want to highlight a, a few things. First, let me just say, um, he really needs, I mean, Millet really needs to take my public speaking course. Uh, this was not well delivered. It was not, uh, I mean, the whole sections of it that I'm sure the audience fell asleep in, it, 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 it could have been so much better, um, it, it just with a little bit of refinement, uh, both a little bit of editing of the talk itself and I'm not here talking about philosophical points, just p pedagogical, uh, public speaking. And then I know how good of a public speaker Millet can be. We, I've seen him, uh, you know, and he's talked on radio and TV. He's brilliant. And, you know, uh, he needs to get away from this. I am a Davos, therefore it's a really, really intimidating audience. Therefore, I need to wear my glasses at the end of my nose and read a pre-prepared speech in a boring you know, monotone fashion. So he needs to get away from that, right? But the content, for the most part, there's some, uh, I'll highlight a few things where I think he could have done better. But the content, for the most part, was just excellent. He starts out by basically saying, all the problems that you have, people, are because, uh, because you're moving towards socialism. And okay, uh, you know, uh, this probably makes Scots and other people's day. He's attacking the left. Isn't this great? But then he does something really, really, really cool to undermine the Scots of the world. He actually talks about what he means by socialism. And what he means by socialism is not just the left. What he means by socialism is to a large extent what Ayn Rand meant by socialism. He means statism. And he says, socialism means, yes, the traditional socialist, but it also it means the woke, but it also means the nationalists. It also means all these different forms of collectivism. It's all you collectivists. You're all socialists. It's not just about the left. It's equally about the right and a number of his examples. When he lists the examples of socialism, are from the right. And wow, how many people have that understanding of socialism? A socialism understood as statism, a socialism understood as collectivism, a socialism understood as state intervention. And he says, we used to, we used to think that socialism meant the state owns the means of production, but no more. Now, the state has discovered that it can control the means of production without owning them. Yeah, fascism. So, brilliant. Brilliant in a sense that expanding, not being narrow, not affiliating yourself with any political position. On stage, he calls himself a libertarian. Now, I don't think that's ideal. But it's so much better than calling himself a conservative or calling himself a right wing or calling himself any of these easily put into a bucket. And he defines libertarianism. 
it, it, you know, in a reasonable kind of way without it coming across as wacky or crazy. He constantly talks about freedom, freedom, freedom. Freedom is what makes you rich. Freedom is what I'm about. He talks about the evil of collectivism. Constantly throughout the talk, he talks about collectivism and that it's evil and it's wrong and that the alternative is not some kind of right-wing nationalism. The alternative is individualism. He names it. There were parts of the talk, I have to say, my wife was sitting next to me and I was like, either he or speechwriters or somebody close to him has watched my videos. There's just stuff that he said and even the structure of a part of his talk. It, it, it's as if, I mean, it's, it, it, there are two moments where this happened. One is when he talks about, he really structures it. Look, here's the practical case for capitalism. It works, it produces the wealth. But that's, that's not the problem. It's the moral issue. And, and that's what the, everybody attacks. It's, it's, it's the morality of capitalism. But capitalism is moral. Now, he doesn't give a very good explanation why capitalism is moral. He fails there, which is tragic. He needs to do a much better job there. But he, he, he doesn't, he, 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 it's not awful what he does, but it's just not good. But that structure, that follows my morality of capitalism talks. And then the second one is, it's a throwaway line where he talks about the pie. He says, the pie and the fact that the pie is not static, it grows. And the pie and the static is not grows, it was, again, right out of my inequality talks, right? So I don't know. And you know, I've been to, I've been to Argentina uh, several times. I've given these, these exact talks on inequality and on morality of capitalism several times. People in the audience, uh, there were a lot of small L libertarian or big L libertarians in the audience, who knows? what the connections are, but it's there. He talks about morality. He talks about the fact that the economic case is unequivocal, but the real attack on capitalism is a moral attack, and that we need a moral defense of capitalism. Again, I think his, the, the moral defense he provides was weak and a little quick and a little kind of couched over, and, 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 and the consequence of that is, of course, um, uh, uh, that he doesn't really... I, I don't know that he gets it, or I don't know that he wants to give it to the audience, but that, that was uh, pretty quick. Um, but then the closing of the speech. God, the closing of the speech is so inspired by Ayn Rand. You know, a little bit of Israel Kutzner, who he mentions in the talk, but really inspired by Ayn Rand. The closing of the speech is, is truly uh, uh, unbelievable. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not libertarian. Libertarians don't talk this way. Libertarians don't talk about this ever at all. This is pure Ayn Rand. She was the only one, and to the extent libertarians talk about it, it's because of Ayn Rand. He talks about the businessman as being a hero. And, and in this sense... It's the best in terms of getting close to the moral case of capitalism. He talks about the businessman being a hero, the business being the greatest benefactor to humanity. Who says that? Who says that except Ayn Rand? Stunning. Um, you know, uh, I'll give you a few of the things that I think were wrong, both stylistically and, uh, and, and, uh, and in terms of content. But it, it's, he's a politician. He's standing up in Davos. You know who introduced him? Do you know who introduced Millet to give this particular talk? He was introduced by Klaus Schwab, the, 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 the founder, the CEO, the, the chief behind the World Economic Forum. One of the most evil statists out there, somebody who is the essence of the kind of socialism, the statism, really fascism, because Schwab is really a fascist, that Millet is arguing against. The worst kind of 
I don't know, call him an intellectual, that you could imagine. He's the one who introduced Millet. He must have been in the audience listening to this. Given the context, given the place, given the audience, given all, you know, and given the quality of, you can't, you can't, I mean, you, we can quibble on, on the details, but, you know, uh, he is, uh, I mean, this was a, a, a great speech. So, I mean, this is one of the great best speeches a politician has given on a, a broad, kind of as a broad philosophical outlay. Um, you know, again, it, so, so what do I, what, what am I against? I'd say two points, I, I mean, really one point stylistically. Uh, 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 on a couple of places, he goes into professor mode. I'm going to teach you how, um, uh, you know, too many numbers, too many stats. When he's trying to describe the growth of the of wealth in the West, you, you don't need those numbers and stats. You can, you could, you can. Uh, uh, I mean, you can do it in a much easier, much more easily digestible way than what he did. Uh, he then goes into a long explanation about what, why markets don't fail can't fail, which is completely right, but it just becomes too professorial, too a little bit academic, too slow, it, you, you know, you lose the audience. So those are stylistic points. Nothing he said about either one of those topics is wrong, both are actually right. If anything, he underplays the benefits, the economic um, uh, kind of benefits that capitalism has provided the West. There's ways to illustrate that it's even much greater than the numbers he illustrates. But he's completely right on both points. It just it comes across as a little too um, professorial. He, he needs to he needs to uh, uh, he needs to watch uh, as Michael suggests here. He needs to watch Milton Friedman a little bit d d do economics and and uh, uh, do economics for the layman. It, it, nobody was quite as good as Milton Friedman in taking economic concepts and making them digestible to the common person. Um, uh, so that's stylistically mainly because there was nothing content wrong. I'd say the content points, uh, weak on the morality, just didn't get it, did, didn't get there. It, and it felt like he was rushing it. Again, I think there's an inherent discomfort with the moral point. Um, I think uh, he, uh, you know, he attributes rights to God. It's a quick point. He, he implicitly, doesn't make a big deal out of this, but he, he implicitly... Uh, uh, suggests abortion is evil. Um, yeah, I, I mean, those are the big ones that I can recall right now. Um, the, 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 the things that I would, I, I, you know, I, I love to see gone and redone and replaced. Um, but so, so yes, so uh, 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 there were some uh, uh, some weaknesses. I wish he'd spent just a little bit more on the morality and, and dug a little deeper into that and linked it up to his argument for individualism, 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 and his argument against collectivism, because his argument for individualism against collectivism has to be moral at the end, and he needs to, he needs to figure out what that argument is. It, it, he's going to be troubled by, if he can't link it to individualism. And then one other complaint I have, and this relates to his libertarianism, and that is the way he accuses the state of doing things. Sadly, it, it reveals this kind of uh, uh, anarchism, um, uh, reveals his anarchism. It's the hatred of the state uh, which is motivating. I, I, I just wish, wish I had, given that he's new to all these ideas, remember Millet was a Keynesian, 12 years ago, he was a statist 12 years ago. Uh, he's new to these. I, I, I wish I had time with him to talk about the, the, uh, the, the anarchy um, because I really think he's smart enough, intelligent enough to get it and to overdo it. And, and when he says the state, which is, I, I mean, if you limit it to the current state, absolutely, but the way it's said and in the context it's said, it's an accusation about the state per se. And I think that weakens your case. Uh, it would be great if in one of his talks, he articulated a moral case for a state and the proper role, the proper role of the state. 
Uh, and, and if he did that even in a sentence, then blaming stuff on the state would be fine because the context is the improper state, the not right state. So again, uh, I think that's too bad uh, and, and it reveals these weaknesses, the, the, the anarchist weaknesses. But given all that, in particular, his just praise of the businessmen in the, in the last segment of his speech, in his closing, was so good and very appropriate for Davos. Uh, in the sense of, uh, I mean, some of the best leading, most innovative businessmen are at Davos. You can criticize them all you want, but they are there. And uh, to give them that kind of boost and to connect it to liberty, to connect it to an attack on collectivism, to connect it to an attack on, on, on uh, statism in all its different forms, to collect, it, it, it is fantastic. And... and uh, I, I think has the potential to have a real impact on business leaders globally, which would be massive, huge, uh, uh, in, in terms of uh, in terms of the potential I impact. Uh, uh, the speech, I'm sure, will be viewed a lot, and that's great. Uh, and um, generally, I, I'm excited to see uh, how this develops. I, I, I wish, you know, Millet got himself to the point where he's comfortable in front of an audience like this. And, and, and the say, same thing happened in his inauguration and other formal speeches and be less formal in his delivery. He needs to loosen up. He needs to embrace his own passion, embrace his own style without swearing, still being dignified, all of that, but just bring out that personality that in the end won him the election. Right? And then won him the election and got people excited about him. Um, I, 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 really, I, I don't think it helps his case to be so stiff and, uh, and, and uh, in, in potentially boring. So uh, I hope I get a chance to uh, meet Millet. I, I'm happy to do a uh, short public speaking seminar for him. It wouldn't take more than an hour and, he, and we'd be done. Uh, it, it, it really isn't that hard because he has, he has all the skills. You know it because I've seen him. I've seen him do it. Uh, I've seen him do it before.